Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Zenzo with Tazawa Tanks. Now, I have a YouTube channel, obviously, and one of the challenges with having a YouTube channel is sometimes you kind of run out of things to talk about. Now, I've heard other YouTubers talk about it. I've talked to YouTubers about this. I don't really consider myself a YouTuber. I have a YouTube channel, but I don't really consider myself a YouTuber since I have a regular job. Um, but, it, you kind of run out of topics. Once you've made 200, 300, 400, in my case, over 500 videos and growing, you kind of talk about the same thing over and over. It feels that way. So um, I'm always looking for new ideas, which is why we're doing a Q&A video today. If you happen to have a topic that you would like for me to cover, and if it's something that I find interesting, let me know down below in the comments. Write it down below in the comments. I'll read them and hopefully we'll come up with some good ideas for future videos. Now, before I jump into the Q&A, and I've got a bunch of good questions from a lot of you out there on my YouTube uh, community post, and I'm gonna grab some from Instagram as well. I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, and you know who it is. You can tell by the shirt I'm wearing. I love these shirts into the AM. Now this is a new shirt that they, they just sent to me. This is one of their new designs. The material is awesome. The fit is amazing. Really good quality. I've, I've been wearing these for a few years now. Washing them's not an issue, multiple washes. So if you're out there, summer's coming, you want some cool merch, some nice looking shirts with lots of different graphic designs, check out Into the AM and see their link below for a discount. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators that formed an apparel company to share a common vision of developing premium apparel that elevates self-expression while focusing on comfort by using the highest quality materials and eco-friendly inks. Into the AM has dozens of cool designs to choose from, covering many categories including t-shirts and tank tops, hoodies and jackets, hats, and even joggers and shorts. Use the link and discount code below to shop at Into the AM and find your clothing piece to express what drives you. Now we're going to jump into the questions. So the first question is, uh, for a peacock tank, would you recommend buying all the fish from the start instead of periodically adding four to five until the stocking is full? Now when we're talking about peacocks, we're talking about Al Alanacara, African cichlids from Lake Malawi. They get quite large. They are very aggressive. They are very beautiful. I don't want to say they're very aggressive. They're pretty aggressive, right? Moderately plus aggressive. They're not going to destroy everything, but they can pick on fish and you could have some fish deaths. So typically when you have a peacock tank or an African cichlid tank, you want to have overstocking, meaning that you have a lot of fish in there. It kind of creates a situation where one fish can't get picked on because there's too many fish to kind of target and single out. And typically people have better results with a overstocked or well-stocked aquarium. Now, in the case of adding fish, typically when I'm adding African cichlids to an aquarium, I will add them four to five at a time. That's because I'm adding them at larger sizes. So if I go to the fish store, I see some beautiful male peacocks. I buy a few that are like maybe three or four inches. Um, I'm gonna buy four or five of them, turn off the lights, do a water change, all that kind of stuff. I made a video about that. I'll put it in, up here or down below in, in the description or the pinned comment. But uh, basically, um, I'll add four or five at a time and um, let them get acclimated, then I could do the same thing. Now, in this case, because you're adding very small ones at two to three centimeters, which if you convert that to inches, that's like less than an inch and a quarter. So those are very small, very small uh, African cichlids. They're almost not showing color. I actually have some down here. I'll pop up some B-roll in a moment, or Matt will. In that case, if, if they're that small, I would just go ahead and get as many as you need for your aquarium. So if you have a 75 gallon tank and you wanna have, I don't know, 12 or 15 or whatever it is, just buy all 15 put them in there at an inch and they'll grow up and grow out together and uh, it should be fine. The next question, have you ever kept a reef? Uh, yes and no. So a reef tank, saltwater tank, a uh, reef tank would be a saltwater tank that has um, like live coral uh, and other uh, organisms in there, so basically coral. Um, I have but with kind of a asterisk. So I've kept like a nano reef, little five gallon tank. I had some, I forgot what I had at this point. It's been, there's a video on this channel where I've kind of talked about my experience of buying the coral and letting them grow and all that kind of thing. I did like it for a while, um, but I ended up just giving that tank to a friend of mine and uh, he, I think he still has it running. Uh, 
cute little reef tank, but um, yeah, I've, I haven't really like gone fully into the reef world. I used to take care of saltwater tanks when I had my service business. I've had Fowler tanks before. Um, and at some point I could see myself doing a reef tank again. And if I did, I'd probably do a larger reef tank, um, maybe at least 40 gallons or larger. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of more of a freshwater guy. But yeah, I have, I have dabbled and I might do it again in the future. Uh, here's a good question. Uh, hi Zenzo, I have a question for you. Do you believe in instant cycling and putting the fish right in after setting up uh, using liquid products, dirt, uh, dirty water uh, from sponge filters and other aquarium, from other aquariums, other methods? Um, so yes, actually I'll be right back. Now, when it comes to instant cycling and using uh, chemicals, um, I happen to use products from Fritz. So we've got the uh, Fritz Zyme 7, and there's also Turbo Start. Now, the difference between these two is uh, this is basically shelf stable, kept at room temperature. This is a live bacteria that uh, is shipped to you in dry ice, um, typically, or shipped cold and uh, you keep it in the refrigerator. So yes, I have started new aquariums that way, but typically I always add a seeded filter. So meaning like, even if I set up a brand new aquarium, let's say I set up a brand new 20 gallon tank and there's nothing in there, it's just water from the tap and some dechlorinator, maybe I'll add some Fritzheim 7. I'm gonna take a sponge filter from another aquarium and that's a great thing about sponge filters. I'm gonna take a sponge filter from another aquarium that's been established with beneficial bacteria and I'm gonna pop it in that aquarium and there I've got my seed, my start to grow additional beneficial bacteria and having something like Fritzheim 7 or Turbo, Turbo Start is going to help in allowing me to add fish right away. So yes, I have added fish right away. Other ways that I've done it, and I've done this with friends before that have set up new tanks, is they'll say, hey Zenzo, I got this tank, I need to set it up right away. Do you have any filter media? And I'll go in and I'll clean out like some filters and pull out some filter floss, or I usually keep sponges and stuff like that and extra tanks, and I'll have like all this gunky material, and I'll just give them like a Ziploc bag with nasty, filthy filter stuff. And they're, they're essentially just taking the junk and gunk from my tank and putting it in theirs. And that also has beneficial bacteria and will start to seed. And you can also do the same thing by moving substrate from one aquarium to another aquarium, decorations, live aquarium plants, all that kind of stuff, it does help. And yes, I do uh, practice the instant cycle, but that's by using these methods. Now here is an interesting question, and this question uh, is a little bit complex, and I can understand why they're having a challenge. So the question is uh, referencing, uh, many reference the term target feeding or targeted feeding um, when having a tank of mixed cichlid species. So what target feeding means is that you have a, a specific type of fish in an aquarium, and you're making sure that you're giving food specifically for that fish, and you might even be delivering it in a method to ensure that that fish gets that type of food. So for example, let's say you have an aquarium with bottom dwellers, you wanna make sure that you have a food that sinks quickly, that the top and mid dwellers don't get to right away. It might be rapashi or sinking algae wafer or something like that. That's kind of a target feed. Uh, you might have something that's a carnivore or a piscivore and uh, a piscivore, and you have that uh, fish maybe hiding in a cave and you might take some tongs and have like a little piece of shrimp or a scallop or something and put that in an aquarium for that fish to be able to grab it and eat it. So that's target feeding. And when it comes to a mixed cichlid tank, what we're talking about, what this person is talking about, is having a mix of peacocks and buna and haps. Uh, the difference, they're all from Lake Malawi. Uh, the difference between uh, imbuna and peacocks and haps really um, is their diet. So uh, the imbuna are going to be more of an omnivore slash herbivore, meaning that they'll graze on algae, they'll eat plant matter, and they will go after animal proteins as well. So they'll eat, you know, whatever's available, small crustaceans and other fish that are small that they catch and, you know, opportunistic that way. Um, but primarily they're gonna want more vegetation in their diet, whereas Alanacara or peacocks and Haplochromus haps are more uh, piscivores and predatory and need more of a uh, meaty type diet. Now, typically most cichlid foods that you're gonna buy cater to all. So if you're giving a quality cichlid pellet or a quality cichlid flake or some type of food, 
it's gonna be okay for your Mbuna and your Haps and your Peacocks, but you still want to maybe enrich their, enrich their lives and give them some additional food. So in my case, when I have dealt with mixed aquariums, I'll feed both at the same time. So typically what I'll do is I'll put pellets in the aquarium and maybe I'll do some sinking and some slow sinking or some floating. And then I'll also put like uh, blanched spinach in the tank. Um, I might do like a rapashi gel. I might do like a zucchini, blanched zucchini, things like that. And if you put that in the aquarium, probably what's gonna happen is your umbuna, your peacocks and haps, they're all gonna go after the pellets and the other food, right? That's like ready to eat. Um, but what will happen is that other ve vegetables that you put in the tank, they're gonna kinda hang out and no one's gonna eat them right away, probably. But after an hour or two, like the peacocks and haps have eaten, and they're like, well, we're done. But the Mbuna are like, hey, we could eat some more. And oh, look, there's some zucchini, oh, there's spinach. And they're gonna go after that. And the peacocks and haps are gonna leave it alone because they have no interest in eating spinach and zucchini. They might nibble at it. Every once in a while I have had my peacocks that will eat it, but uh, they would definitely prefer the pellets and your Mbuna are gonna go after it more. So I would say just put it the, veg the vegetables and other stuff. I actually take algae out of aquariums and put it in my Mbuna tank. I'll take duckweed and put it in there. So they'll clean it up and eat it right away. Um, so yep, just put it in there all together. They'll probably go after the pellets and then they eventually they'll eat the vegetation and they'll be fine with the balanced diet. Uh, next question. Oh, this is, uh, this is, this question actually deserves its own video. And um, maybe if enough of you are interested, I'll make this video. I have a question with your busy life and fish room. How do you balance time and being in the fish room and your day-to-day -day life? I do have a busy job. I'm into other stuff, lifting weights, riding motorcycles. I have a family um, and taking care of a fish room is not easy. So uh, how do I balance it? I don't know, razor's edge. Uh, sometimes these tanks look terrible. I was in here for a couple of hours yesterday doing a bunch of water changes. It's just kind of like, you're like, all right, it's water change day. I'm gonna go down here, listen to a podcast and get my you know elbows wet for a couple of hours. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a challenge. That's a longer video, but um, it's not easy. I'll put it, I'll put it that way. Uh, next question is uh, in reference to the photo that I put on my community page about, uh, basically I had a small baby fry, um, peacock cichlid and a, a large adult. And uh, this person has asked me, basically, well, I'll paraphrase, they're asking me, what if you have a fish that looks like the adult colored up fish and then it turns more drab in color? Uh, there are a couple of reasons why. In this, in this particular case, they have uh, only a single peacock. Typically, you're keeping African cichlids together in a bunch of them, like we have here or there or behind the camera. Um, but in this case, they have a, a single African cichlid with other types of fish. They have glowfish, clown loaches, um, so kind of like a community tank. Now, it could be, a, could be a situation where the fish is stressed, so it might be where the water parameters are not ideal for the African cichlid. The African cichlids tend to like higher pH, harder water that kind of repl replicate uh, the reef lakes of East Africa. What I do, I don't have hard water here, so I use crushed coral in all of my aquariums, especially my Tanganyikan and Malawi tanks. And then I'll do cichlid buffers and cichlid salts to kind of replicate uh, the lakes and give them the minerals. So here we've got uh, my Fritz cichlid buffer, my Fritz uh, cichlid salt, if it'll focus. Um, so these are designed to uh, mimic East African uh, rift lakes and give the minerals that the fish desire. Um, so it might be that your fish is stressed uh, and that's why it's changing color. Uh, there might be some other reason, maybe it's um, stressed out because of where the tank is located. If it's, if they don't feel safe, if because you don't have a lot of fish in there, they might feel like they're um, kind of alone and vulnerable and so they'll not be as colorful and vibrant. Maybe there's another fish that's bothering it. It could be that, uh, could be that. Um, the other thing that could happen, and I've seen this before, I've had firsthand experience, I've seen it with other people, is you'll buy a fish from a fish store and maybe it's like four inches or three inches and it's usually a little bit on the smaller side. So maybe it's three inches and super colorful Alanacara and you get home and after a couple of months, it's brown and gray and nothing, and doesn't look like anything like the uh, fish that you described or you, or you had originally. And that is because the fish was probably juiced. What juice means is that um, sometimes fish farms will give 
uh, like hormones in the food to the fish and they all look amazingly colorful. They'll do some color enhancers and some hormones to give, give off like that male vibrant look. Um, it might be a female. I've actually seen females take on male, male characteristics because of the hormones, just like any animal and humans. If a human were to take uh, a different type of hormone, you're gonna see muscular growth and you can see hair loss and hair growth and all kinds of things, right? So um, the same thing happens with the fish. And then once you take them off of the hormones, meaning you're not giving them the juiced uh, food anymore, they're gonna go back eventually to their natural state. And it might be like a gray or a brown female that you have. So a couple of options there. That's what I've experienced. And um, hopefully it's you know the first one where you can correct it um, because if it's a female, it's never gonna look colorful again. All right, I know I'm going long, I'm talking a lot, but I have a couple questions on Instagram. And I don't always get to Instagram questions because I get so many of them. Sometimes they'll sit in my one of my folders for weeks and weeks before I have a chance to take a look at them. But here are a couple of questions. Uh, one question is coming from someone that recently got into multis. Multis are shell drillers, Neolamprologus multifasciatus. There's these really cool Tanganyikan fish. And they're asking me what I recommend feeding them. For me, my multis will eat anything that's small enough for them to, to fit in their mouth and it will sink down to their level. So they typically will stay on the lower area of the aquarium, so like your bottom third. They like to be near their shells to dart in if necessary. Um, so I would do uh, like any type of uh, flake food, crushed up flake food, any ground pellets or smaller pellets, granule foods, uh, live baby brine shrimp, frozen brine shrimp, uh, frozen bloodworms, all of it. They'll eat it, they'll eat anything that's small enough and makes it to them that's on the meatier side. Uh, they don't eat vegetables or anything like that. Next question, and probably my last question, uh, is from another person on Instagram. They say, I have a two inch baby Oscar that they got two days ago. I'm sorry that I'm just getting to this now. How many times a day should I feed it and how much? So when it comes to small fish I, or any fish, I have a rule. Once, twice, thrice. Uh, so one, two, three. So basically if you have an adult fish, I typically will feed them once per day. Usually every day if I'm on vacation or out of town, they won't eat for a few days and I've made videos about that perfectly fine. If they are juveniles, I would feed them twice. So in your case, uh, two inches is still kind of on the baby side. So maybe more than two times, but a juvenile fish growing needs more calories, more nutrients to grow. I would feed them twice a day. And for baby fish, for fry, for fish that are growing very quickly, I would feed them three times a day. They also don't have as much body weight, which means they can't store as much caloric energy from the food that they're eating. They don't have as much fat and all of their energy is going towards growth and sometimes escaping other fish. So I would feed them three times a day. For those of you that asked me a question, hopefully I gave you an answer that is helpful. Uh, again, if you have an idea on a video that I haven't thought of that you would like for me to make, comment down below. Maybe I'll get a few of them and then we'll throw up a poll and let all of you vote. Also, don't forget to check out Into the AM, my favorite t-shirt company, amazing. And it's not just the, the prints that I like, it's actually like really good quality quality um, material. I have like hats and sweats and the whole thing. Like it's like super like durable, soft, stretchy cotton. So uh, anyway, check them out down below. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Catch you on the next one.